If you're from America, or possibly other places, then you are probably familiar with the character of Uncle Sam. He's the national personification of the United States. And for anime fans who don't know what that is, imagine a significantly less yaoi version of Hitalia. And although we don't see him around as much anymore, he still holds a place in our national consciousness. However, there's another character who sort of represented Americans for a very short time back in the dark ages of our reptilian British overlords, and his name was John Bull. John Bull was created by Scottish Tory John Arbuthnot as a character in a series of political pamphlets titled Law is a Bottomless Pit. He was a straw man representing the Whig Party, created to deride the party's leadership during the War of Spanish Succession. He was a middle-class craftsman who would go on to become a lawyer and take to court characters representing the kings of Spain and France. He was also kind of slow, with an adulterous wife and servants who would steal from him. By the time the American Revolution came around, he would have a much better reputation as he began to represent the whole of England. Cartoonists used John Bull to portray the frustration of your average Englishman with the policies of their government, especially taxes. So when people ask me why Americans hate taxes so much, Who taught you how to do this stuff? You, alright? I learned it by watching you. In the War of 1812, we begin to see John Bull being used by foreign cartoonists to convey their displeasure with the actions of the British government. Here we see Napoleon and John Bull being lectured by Lady Columbia about free trade and open navigation of the seas. But Napoleon is being super French about this whole thing by not listening, and John Bull is being very British about it, meaning that he isn't going to take your advice, but he's going to be very polite about it. At this time, we see John Bull complaining about taxes. Again. I learned it by watching you. In the latter half of the 19th century, we see John Bull begin to more and more represent the British Empire as a whole instead of just England. Here we see John Bull as a doctor looking to solve that Irish problem the English keep having. We see him portrayed negatively during the American Civil War, turning his back on the slaves and the rebelling Confederacy. You see, before the American Civil War, the South was one of the largest suppliers of cotton for Europe, and the war put a strain on the international cotton market. The CSA government tried to use what has been called cotton diplomacy to get Britain and France to join their side in the war. It didn't work. But because of the British merchants who continued to trade with the Confederacy during the war, John Bull was portrayed as no longer caring about the plight of slaves. By the end of the 19th century, we begin to see the special relationship develop between the British Empire and the United States, with Uncle Sam and John Bull hanging out a lot, bringing civilization to the darker-skinned peoples of the world. At the turn of the century, we see the UK Conservative Party begin to use John Bull in their campaign posters, warning about the Liberal Party's attempts at sneaking socialism into the country, or how David Lloyd George's policies were tying up John Bull, allowing Germany, France, Russia, and America to push him over a cliff. It's around this time that we see John Bull begin to fall out of use. What was once a man who disliked his government just as much as you did, suddenly became a representative of it, especially as the world wars began. Here he is, standing in front of soldiers asking why you haven't enlisted yet. A quick side note, do you think Winston Churchill modeled his later life appearance after John Bull? Because the similarities are uncanny. He became the rich snob who sends poor kids off to die for an empire people don't feel like defending anymore. And so with World War II, we see the last uses of John Bull, mostly for motivational propaganda works, like America's Rosie the Riveter. And now he is used so infrequently that some have forgotten he ever existed. This leaves us with a question, how much longer will his American cousin survive? Thanks for watching.